Oh, what's up, guys? Happy Tuesday. Welcome to episode six of Shred Your Body. My name is Jesse James Jemnick. I just lost somebody. Hopefully, we'll get him back. Um, but welcome to another Tuesday edition of Shred Your Body. And I'm really, really jacked up about tonight's call because if you can't see, I have some special, special guests with me. And these guys are like almost original ER shredders. These guys have been here for, you know, multiple shreds. They have adopted to the lifestyle. They have gone through the highs. They have gone through the lows. Um, and their, their stories are just incredible. And my mission for this call every week, every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here live on Facebook Live, is to either share science so people can can learn and educate themselves. So we're we're on a mission, if you're if you haven't heard, to impact literally world health with the ER shred. We are helping people come alive. We are helping people identify how food works inside their body, fueling their body, eliminating the culprits. And we have just gotten ridiculous results. I mean, ridiculous results. Like if I'm being honest, when I talked to Sean, my, my, my brother from another mother um, in the beginning, you know, I, I know we knew it was going to work, but I don't think we really realized the massive now worldwide impact that the ER Shred is making. Um, so without further ado, let me introduce my guest. I have on here, um, I love it because it's a mixture, right? We always hear when things work, it's like, oh, well, it's because they're a guy, or oh, it's because they're a girl, or oh, it's because they you know, don't have kids. And no, I got all those excuses covered tonight, and we're gonna share some stories because I mm -hmm. wanna make sure people get healthy. That's my passion. As you come in, say hello to us if you have a specific specific question, drop it into the comments. We will do our best to highlight those and get to those as we go through stories. If you guys have those questions, I'll be looking at that. Um, and really the, the goal tonight is just to have fun. So tonight with me, I have Heather, I have Aubrey, I have Brad, and I have Adam. What's up guys? Hey, hey, thanks for doing this, Jesse. We appreciate it, man. Let's get you got it. Out. Heather, you're on mute. You can take yourself off mute because this, unlike uh, Zoom, it doesn't like pick up every little noise. Um, what's up, Sean's on, here we go. Okay, cool. So let's get started here. Let's go through a brief little background. Adam, you start us off first because you're you're a polished professional here. Um, tell us a little bit about you, where are you from, um, where were you before the ER shred and kind of where are you at now, um, short story journey wise. Yeah, yeah, right on. So again, my name is Adam Sisk. You might have seen some of my posts uh, with the hashtag Sisk Pack. Uh, I have a family of six with the newest additions being seven month old twins. They're seven month old today. And um, life is crazy. Life is crazy without twins in a 2020 year. Life is certainly even crazier with twins in a 2020 year. Um, but I live on the east coast of the United States in Maryland. In I actually live in Berlin, which is about 10 miles, well, about five miles west of Ocean City, Maryland. I've lived here for 10 years. I'm originally from the Washington, D.C. area. Um, but so where was I before ER Shred? I've been with the company that we've partnered with for about four and a half years now and love the, the products that they offer. I love the protocols that they offer. Um, but I was noticing that uh, I was still not hitting my full potential uh, with the protocols that I wanted to. I'm 44 years old, by the way, uh, ex-professional baseball player. And that, that was a lifetime ago. So, you know, I've always been in tune with what my body wants and what my body says and what my body tells me to do and what not to do. And when I first saw the ER shred, Sean Escobar, you know, putting it out there on his lives and stuff like that. It intrigued me because like I just said, I, I was a professional athlete normally with professional athletes or with any athlete for that matter uh, comes a lot of injuries and hopefully not surgeries. But in my case, I had a lot of surgeries, which brings on inflammation and pain and things like that. So guys, I've done the vegan thing. I've done acupuncture. I've done, uh, you know, 
everything under the sun to try to control the inflammation and control the subsequent pain from that. And so when I saw the ER shred come along, I was like, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. And uh, lo and behold, within a short amount of time, I was feeling the benefit from that. And I don't know how much you want me to get into this, Jesse, but my biggest, the biggest factor for me with this, because it wasn't weight loss for me or energy or anything like that. It was the inflammation. And the, the, the way I was able to finally get uh, the, the empowerment to control my cravings, which mm -hmm. my cravings, I'm not a sweets guy. I'm a carbs guy, big time mm. carbs guy. At least I used to be. I saw your pantry. Uh, I was able to, <laughs> yeah, that was my mom's. <laughs> so you knew how, how I grew up. And I mean, if, you, if back in the day, like six weeks ago, if you would have put a bag of Cheetos or chips in front of me, they'd have been gone unless you took it away. Mm. And uh, this has been by far the most, like I said, empowering protocol that I've ever had done to control that. I never knew I was so addicted to it until I was able to release it. And it, it's mm. just been great. So, mm. and the community that, that ER Shred and, you know, all you guys, I didn't, Jesse, you and I have met a few times prior to this yep. um, at events and stuff like that. And I've seen you on social media, but everyone else, most everyone else in the ER Shred group, I never knew y'all, but now it's like we're this tight knit, awesome family that has the same, you know, mentality and goals yep. and we will all want each other to just succeed it's just been it's it's such a breath of fresh air especially in a in a time that we live in uh where you turn on the news and it's just negative 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 no matter where you look this yep. has just been fantastic for me and my family so thank you that's awesome, bro. Thank you so much for, for that. And we're going to we're going to come back and dive into a couple things that you that you kind of talked about that I wrote down. But I think you're right, man. One of the coolest parts about this for me is the community aspect, getting to know all you guys like you and I, like you said, you have, we, we, we met before, but really getting to know you more now and seeing your kids and the twins and the videos and just you, all you guys, you know what I mean? Like I built a relationship with all of you and it's just, it's my favorite part of this whole thing. I, you know, obviously health is my passion. I want everybody to be healthy because I think health is our greatest wealth and we deserve to be healthy so we can give to ourselves and give to our loved ones and everyone else that that's looking to us. But, but really getting to meet not just acquaintances, but develop friends and a support group, especially now, like Adam said, Oh man, that's, that's awesome. So, all right, Heather, how about you? We're um, quick little story about you, your background. So people kind of, you know, know who you are. All right. So quick little story. I'll try and keep it as brief as I can. I am a middle school music teacher. I am a mom of a six year old. I live in new England. I'm up in Connecticut. Um, where was I prior to the shred? I was in the chaos of 2020. The, my whole teaching profession went remote. I am an instrumental instructor. We lost everything. And with that, I turned to food. Um, and so that was definitely something very challenging for me. I decided in August I was going to start making changes. But the changes I was making, while they were making progress, they were not giving me results. And it was like I had added another job because I was doing carb cycling. I was measuring. I was weighing my food, portioning and everything, which was another task to to do and so i was watching people on the shred and i'm like let me give it a shot mm. and fred says come alive on day five and man did it happen teaching a hundred and something students remotely revamping my entire program and making my orchestra a virtual ensemble i now have the mental clarity to be able to manage 10 remote classes plus an online ensemble um literally day five i felt the difference Wow. Truly, truly came together. And wow. Doing that with a first grader or doing remote learning. We're we're making it happen. And I'm grateful for the headspace and the control that I have gained from getting that mental clarity mm -hmm. that I can balance this. I mean, I'm in the process of doing a 203K renovation loan and things and stress are coming at me and I'm able to handle it. And, and stay in control because I have become empowered. I've taken control back. Yeah, that that's so awesome. That is seriously 
freaking awesome. I mean, if that doesn't light you up, like I'm like, wow, wow. Like all that just from the power of food. And you touched on a couple of things that I want to dive into about, you know, how you were in kind of like this hardcore diet mentality where this kind of comes along. And I want to kind of see how this plays into your guys' lifestyle now. Cause I feel like a lot of people are like, okay, this is an 11 day thing. And I'm like, no, 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 this is not an 11 day thing. This is just, that's your, that's your giddy up and get start go in. That's the beginning of the tracks. We're laying those tracks for you to follow. So you can actually once and for all create a healthy lifestyle where and that's shifting physically, that's shifting mental, you know, mentally. And man, I'll tell you, I have it's been a joy to watch you flourish and blossom and and watch you come alive, as we say. And come alive is not just about weight and inches. You know, I always say, look past the pounds, look past the inches, because that's just the byproduct of what the body does when you fuel it for performance. Absolutely. That's the beautiful thing about our body is, you know what I mean? Like, that, we're just amazing. So anyways, uh, Aubrey. Woo! Hey. What's up, girl? So you're on you're on your third shred, right? Is, is that right? I did two. I'm sure two, I two shreds, two shreds. And I know I know you and I have had a lot of chats uh, yeah. about stuff because, you know, you uh, well share your story where, you know, what did you what did you do previously? Where are you from? How did you kind of come about this? And, you know, what's what's been your short story journey so far? Okay, so I'm turning 40 years old in like two weeks. Ugh. <laughs> um, so this is the perfect time to like figure out my life. Um, I live in Tucson. I'm I have three kids. Um, I have been uh, fitness and health has always been a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, I started out like in my 20s as a personal trainer and like studied nutrition and it was always a big interest of mine. I'm a total, I've been a gym rat for 20 years, always at the gym every day. Um, and then I, I've also had a struggle with, um, in the last 10 years with infertility. So I kind of went through like a whole, I went to functional medicine, doctors, naturopaths, Western medicine. Like I've tried, read stacks of books about health and hormones and toxins. And <laughs> I've done all the, tried to do elimination diets, not very successfully. Yeah. Um, and so anyways, I've just been through a lot of things with my health and I, and wanting to be, have a very, like a fit physique and be my best. And it's just something I've been working at for 20 years. Um, yeah. And in the last year, I feel like things have kind of unraveled for me. And I just was like pushing myself so hard and pushing and trying all these different things. I've done all the diets. I've done keto. I've went vegetarian. I've done macro counting. I've been on and off calorie counting every diet, every listening to all these other people of what I should do. And anyway, I just was unhappy because I'm like, I, I'm working so hard. I get up at 5am. I lift weight six days a week. I run, I spin, I run marathons. I, you know, I, I loved exercise, but I was not happy with how I was looking. I, you mm. know, I just have aspirations. And so, mm. yeah, it was Sean. I saw Sean's dang abs and it was intrigued me, you know, I'm sorry, I'm vain, but I was like, what the, okay, this is interesting. Yeah. Um, so, but I also am very skeptical because I have tried a lot of things and I've listened to a lot of people and it just doesn't seem like it ever works. Mm -hmm. So I kept seeing, you know, I kept following and I finally was just like, well, I'm just, you know, I wasn't feeling good. I was feeling exhausted. I was feeling like questioning what I was, everything I've done and like, Am I just old now and like I can't, I, I you know, like I'm going perimenopause and this just isn't going to work and I can't get the results I want and kind of feeling sad, you know. So anyway, I, yeah, I tried it and I, it changed everything for me. The physique was nice. You know, I finally have faith that I could actually, I view myself as an athlete now. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> like, yeah. Like this fat loss, fat, fat loss mentality, like always trying to be small, you know, like I'm mm -hmm. 
I am strong. I need to fuel myself and stop being afraid of food. And I, I'm just so much more in my own power now with it. Yeah. And in control and I can make awesome. my plan and do whatever I want. That's uh yeah. So you, you gave a, a couple great nuggets for sure. Um, and things that I kind of want to go back into as well. Um, but I want to make sure we get everybody, but thank you for sharing that. And I know because we've chatted a lot, um, to kind of go through your journeys and, and you are like, you're doing amazing. And it, it still blows my mind because for so many years, me trying to coach people to understand food, like once I had my aha moment, and I think that's the most powerful is like, you've got to have the aha moment. I always say this, if you don't have that moment, I can tell you what to eat. I can tell you a list. I can write stuff for you, but you, the chances of you actually succeeding with something like that are just not going to happen. And this is one of the favorite, one of my favorite things about this too, is that you guys we're guiding but you guys are really cracking the code for yourself because every single person is so different that you got to figure out what's going to be best for you. But at the end of the day, the human body is the human body and we all need the essentials for sure. Right. To fuel and, and, and fuel ourselves and feel awesome. So you're crushing it. Keep going, Brad, you're up brother. I'm going to unmute you just so we can kind of go, but just you got yourself unmuted. Nope, you're still muted. <laughs> Let me see if I can do it. Okay, talk now. I don't know why he's muted like that. There we go. Can you hear me now? Okay, there we go. You're here. Sorry, man. I have a horrible connection here. You're good, man. We got you. Um, we can hear you good. Go for it. So my name's Bradley C. Um, I'm 41 years old. I'm, I live in Virginia. I'm married with five kids. And um, I did, I actually retired from the military. I did a, a little over 20 years in active duty, uh, eight in the Navy and 12 in the Army. And then uh, I got out and went to, on to a different career. But during that time, you know, coming up through the military, I was always working out and, and tr staying in decent shape. Well, those two years after I retired, I kind of started getting, uh, letting things go a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, I had the doctors telling me, you know, doctor's appointments I was going to telling me I had high cholesterol and different things. This was after a couple of years of being out. And then I decided, you know, we need to get in shape. Let's, let's do it. And so at the beginning of this year was when we made up our minds to get, try to get our health back and, and check. And I did not want to be on medication my whole life, which is what the doctors recommended. I don't even take Tylenol for headaches. So having to mm. take medication for probably it just, I had to find a different way. So I went into doing different diets similar to, to Aubrey. Um, I was doing, I did veganism. I did vegetarian. I did uh, keto, um, meat and eggs diet. I did all these different things to kind of, I was just testing things to see how I felt on these different diets. And the best, uh, the best one that I had tried was the meat and eggs diet. So, but it's still, still was missing from that. And, uh, Did we just lose Brad? I, mean, I think we lost Brad. Okay. All right. So we're going to go. So Brad's an amazing guy. Brad's like done three shreds. Like his transformation is nuts. He went from like puffy. You could see all this inflammation to where like literally he's got the lines, you know, he's got the lines starting to come in with his abs now. And, you know, the dudes, I mean, he's busy as all heck, obviously with five kids. I think I got him back now. His connection's kind of going on. We lost you. We lost you, but you're back. Lost you there. Sorry. I was just talking about how you've gone from where you were to where now we can actually see lines of abs and, and the body starting to respond. And, you know, even after all these, these things that you've tried, you know, coming on this, um, you've kind of made it a lifestyle now to where you're just crushing it. Right. All these different things I was trying and, uh, and I had done isogenics years ago and I, my wife and I decided, you know, we want to get back to that. Well, yeah. I started, I got a, 11 day you there yeah i'm here keep go for it okay so initially i 
out to my sponsors, Rick and Natasha, and, and I, the first thing I did was a, just a normal 11 day. And uh, in that process, I found Sean Escobar while I was just, you know, internet surfing about isogenics thing. And yeah. every <laughs> okay, we're just gonna go. Anyways, I'll tell you the rest of Brad's story. He found Sean while he was internet surfing. He saw Sean's ab abs like Aubrey did. I'm tired of hearing about Sean's abs, by the way. Sean put a shirt on, damn it. Um, and um, and you know, lo and behold, here Brad is one of our biggest contributors. You know, he's a, a shredder for life, is what we like to call him. Because once you get the shift into this is a lifestyle it's not just a diet it's game over lights out and boom here we go so adam let's go back to you real quick um so people talk about the er shred is we have a four system protocol or a, a package of four amazing things that are working together in our favor the first thing that we do the e part is the elimination and, and a couple of you guys have brought up tried the elimination diet before um you know it was something that you you did try before um, did you ever try something like that pre previously? Did you? I, I forgot if you said you tried keto and other things to that nature. I know you were using um, what I consider to be the best health and wellness products on the face of this planet, and I've been searching for 20 years for that. Um, so anybody can fight me on that, but I'm I'm gonna fight you till I'm blue in the face because I, I've tried to prove it wrong. Um, so where were you at that? Like, in, in the elimination sounds. Um, it kind of sounds a little dirty, right? Like it's like, whoa, what, <laughs> like, what are you talking about, dude? And it's like, yeah. that's kind of scary, right? Um, what were your feelings on that? And now that you've done it, what what did you feel in the beginning? And what did you experience while doing it? Describe to people what that's like, because you're a dad of four kids and two of them are, are young twins. How old are your twins now? Seven months today. Seven months old, people. And how old are your other two baby girls? Five and seven. Five and seven. A five-year-old, a seven-year-old, and baby twins. And most people that have that going on say, oh, Jesse, I don't have time. I don't have time for healthiness. So talk about the elimination aspect of it and, and what can people expect wh when they do yeah. that? Yeah. So I've, I've done two, uh, I guess, elimination types of things in the past. So I think like 10 years ago, I did the Adkins protocol. Okay. For a little while not, not for any other reason but vanity i wanted to get shredded and um so i did it and i and i dropped 20 pounds like that and it was fantastic but there was no um other information that i was searching for as to why it was working or what was healthy and what wasn't and the minute that i went off it guess what boom right back to where I was because it never addressed the, the, the underlying addictions that I had to, you know, some other products or other foods. Um, and then I, I think it was the beginning of 2019. Um, I was, I was suffering some, some really bad pain for a long time. Uh, inflammation was up, couldn't figure it out. And so, and I think that was right around the time the, um, those those vegan documentaries started to come out. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget Game Changers. I think is one of them, and uh, Knives Over Forks or Forks Over Knives or something. Forks Over Knives. Yep. Yeah. So I watched it, and I was like, "Wow, okay, that kind of makes sense." So I decided to go vegetarian slash vegan as much as possible at the beginning of that year, and you know, I, I experienced some benefit to that, but man, that is hard to do <laughs> so hard to do i mean you got to buy so much stuff and then prepare it and or clean it and then cut it and prepare it and yeah it's just and it's, it doesn't taste i mean it tastes good but and it made you feel good but man a lot of a lot of time a lot of money um and i didn't get the relief i was looking for uh from that and uh so i kept on searching, kept on searching. So, but as a father of four, and, and you just spoke of, of how busy it is, you know, cause we have to virtually school our five and seven year old also. And, um, yeah, yeah, we're busy. <laughs> yeah. We're busy. So when you did, and, when you, 
when you did this this elimination aspect, did you find yeah. it to be hard? How did it fit into a busy dad's lifestyle? Okay. You know, to right. talk about some of that so people can see. Right. You know, people are like, I'm busy. I don't know if I can do it. Right. I was just getting to that. And let me tell you something. This has made it so easy. Way, like I just said, way easier than the 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 vegetarian vegan thing. And I'm not knocking that, guys. I'm not mm -hmm. knocking that at all. Um, but even, you know, a typical person or excuse me, a person that says for a, a typical health regimen, I'm too busy for that. No, you're really not, not for this because this makes it so easy. I mean, yeah. my, my two older girls, they drink the shakes with me and my wife does too. I mean, I literally make breakfast for all four of us, um, you know, not twins excluded in two minutes. And they eat it all, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing left on their plate. That drives me nuts when <laughs> there's four corners of bread left over and, you know, eggs left over and I got to throw it away or I probably are going to eat it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, parents. You know, I mean, <laughs> honestly, 90% of the time, I never have to fix myself a plate because I know I will just eat their leftovers. But it, no, man, this has been so easy. And has it been hard to do? No, absolutely not. I mean, you're, you're telling me, I mean, I made a big chuck roast today. I, I let it let it cook for six hours and guess Daddy. I crushed it tonight. Excuse me. Um, One second. Come here. Say hi to everybody since you're in the camera now. This is Whitley. This is my five-year-old. Hi, Whitley. All right. So, guys, all right. I'm on a call. Could you, and this is Eleanor. All right, going upstairs. All right, sorry, guys. Yes. Yes, one second. So, <laughs> as you can see, I'm super busy, and it's been super easy for this, and the results have been fantastic. What other questions did I miss, Jesse? I'm sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Go, go get, go get your baby girl some milk, and we'll come back to you. All right, cool. I'll be right back. Okay, um, Aubrey, talk about you. You're your mom. You got you got three. Um, you're right. You're busy. You're working out. You're trying to get everything done. Um, talk about the the aspect of, you know, you tried keto. You tried veganism. You tried all these things with necessarily, I don't want to say failed results because I believe that, you know, I've tried so many things over the years, guys, trying to crack the code for myself that I'm with you. I get it. Um, but compare what you what you tried to this. Um, and what you experienced differently, like what was the biggest differences from trying those, you know, diet mentalities compared to coming into something like the ER shred? What, what can you, what can you say about it now? Um, well, I would agree with Adam that it is much less time consuming. Um, I would be meal planning constantly, uh, and I would use my fitness pal often. So I would be like logging all these different foods, always like doing all these math problems to like figure out what I needed to, how to make it all fit. Yeah. Um, so this has been like, yeah, so much easier. And also I really cared about getting enough, enough protein all the time. Yeah. Now it's like with the shakes I'm getting, you know, it's, I hit my protein so easy because mm -hmm. I do two shakes and then, yeah, eat some, you know, eggs and the steak and whatever. It's easy. Yeah, it's a lot easier, right? When you get into six grams of, of undenatured protein, for sure. Yeah. So when you did, when you, the, the elimination aspect is we, what we do is we eliminate all the culprit foods. We eliminate the soy, the gluten, the high processed carbohydrates, the chemicals that, because when you put a chemical inside the human body, the cells actually don't know what to do with that. When you did the elimination aspect from where you were, did you find it? Um, I mean, was it, was it hard to stick to, did you find it to be a super challenge or did you find it to be pretty simple in that aspect of things? Um, I feel like I had to, I'll be honest, I yeah, please like do. grieve my old way of eating a little bit, mm -hmm. um, because I ate such a variety of things, but, um, so it's been a process, but I also, I, have found that I feel so much better eating this way. Mm -hmm. It's so much less complicated. Um, and so I, 
I just kind of am, it's been a process for me to like yeah. embrace it. Yeah. But yeah, it's just so so I found that people who are very fit often eat the same things all the time. And I've always kind of pushed up against that and because I, I wanted to like I felt like I have ADD and I want to always have all this variety, but yeah. it's true. And now like I don't have to count calories and macros. Like I'm like you, I kind of figure it out, mm -hmm. but basically kind of eat the same things every day and I know where I'm at. And it just has taken this huge load off. Like so I'm getting the results, but I'm not it's not taking up so much brain space and time. Yeah. No, for sure. That's awesome. I mean you're right. I mean I I really don't stray all that much um, myself. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. I do enjoy, obviously, foods, right? And, and, I, and I want people to understand, you know, I love that you were up front because, again, we're not saying to come in and this is just going to be a cakewalk. We're saying to come in so you can become empowered. And the cool thing with you, Aubrey, is that you just never gave up. Like you, you always said to me, you're like, I know I'm freaking smart enough to figure this out. Like I've been doing this long enough. Like I just, I just got bad information and now you're just getting the basics, right? We always forget the basics. So you're not like any, you're not abnormal in any way. The average American person feels the need for variety. Sean talks about it. I learned this through one of my nutrition schools was, you know, where the only difference between us and animals is that we actually have choice. Like animals are just in this routine because that's just what they know. Like if you're a dare, you eat grass, you eat a couple of vegetables, but mostly you eat grass, right? If you're, you know, an alligator, well, you're eating a lot of meat, right? If you're like, they, there's really no, like, you're not going to see an alligator going up on land and chomping grass petals, you know, or, or, or picking flowers from from the grass like it's just not going to happen right and why as human beings we feel the need that we need all this stuff and it's not you it's media it's millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars that are strategically marketed to you to tell you that you're not pretty you're not skinny enough you're not built enough you're not this you're not that and you and i were talking about this a little bit because you're doing some deep inner mindset work right now where you shared it a little bit. You're like, Jesse, I got to get myself out of this. I need to be skinny mentality. And we're shifting over to no, Orba, you need to fuel your body for performance because you are an athlete and you train like an athlete and you, that's what you, that's what you, that's your goal. So you need to feed the beast. You know, quality food is not going to make somebody fat if we're doing the combination of the exercise and the food. And that's a big, big problem that I deal even with a lot of female bodybuilders is that they fall into that mentality because, you know, it's all about four pieces of asparagus and cold chicken in the baggie. And, you know, it's just, it's all this mindset stuff. And when the time, by the time they say, whoa, I'm getting really sick or I don't want to do this anymore, their relationship with food is crushed. And it takes a long time. And so that goes into two guys. You know, we have the elimination aspect. We have our reset aspect. Um, you know, these, these beautiful things that come together. We shred our body with, you know, good quality meats and healthy fats. And, and we're, we're, giving, we're, we're getting our body to be fat adapted. But do you guys feel... Do you guys feel that you've had some of the success like Adam and Aubrey, whoever wants to Heather, you know, do you feel like you're at where you're at today too, because of one of my favorite aspects, the one that we just give everybody for free, where we have this amazing group of 20,000 people and we have nutritionists and doctors and holistic functional medicine practitioners and, you know, nurses, Aubrey, you're a former NICU nurse. And, you know, all, we have all these amazing people coming together, jiving. Adam, you touched on this a little bit, but do you guys feel like that's been a big piece? Go ahead, Heather. I can jump on that one. Um, honestly, I think this community has been my greatest success and I've been a part of this community for six years. My background is a bachelor's degree in music education and a master's in educational leadership. But I feel like because of the community aspect, I'm willing to learn and listen. Like fitness is not my thing. Nutrition is not necessarily my thing, but because I have paid attention to the community, mm -hmm. I have learned so much that that's why I have been able to be successful because the only mm. other thing I wanted to touch on too, with what kind of what Aubrey was saying, well, this is an elimination and we're eliminating a lot of the variety. I don't feel like I have been restricted. 
Mm, and that's yeah. the biggest shift mm. for me. And I think that's why I was able to do three shreds in a row mm -hmm. because I did not feel like I was restricted. Even mm. though I was eliminating food choices, within the choices I had, number one, I was eating like a queen because it was quality food. It was delicious food. And I was satisfied with it. But I was eliminating the other stuff. But what I gained from that, I didn't feel like I was restricting myself. And then when I was struggling, because I had those days, I would post and somebody would help me out. Mm -hmm. Or if I was struggling, I saw somebody else was struggling with the same thing. And it gave me the willpower, the want to reach out to support them. And it made me hold myself accountable for whatever I was struggling my, with myself. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't even add to that. You just you just nailed that. That's what it's about. You know what I mean? Like, that's really what it's about. Like, I don't think – you have no idea the people that I've seen over the years fail miserably. And they had the best plans. They had – you know, I, I used to think, like, I needed all these certifications, right? Like, I need to get certified, certified, certified. And I realized that – I'll be honest with you. None of it really means shit. Because if I can't get somebody else to actually commit to a lifestyle and to change and understand the power of what that is, like you hit the nail on the head. Like this is not a fad diet. Yes, it is an 11 day protocol to, to freaking like the ER shreds, the ambulance, you're having the heart attack. We're coming in and we're providing the paddles, right? Like Sean laid that out. That's what this is. And that just gives that body the shock. And the beautiful thing about this is because we have that community of all of you amazing people, you know, you really can't fail. It's, it's, it would be impossible to fail. Do you guys agree with that? Like, unless you just like gave up and you didn't put in any work, right? Like if you come in, you're like, like, yeah, I don't want to read the, the document and I don't want to, you know, follow the protocol and I don't want to read the manual and I'm going to do it my way. You know, one of the, I saw somebody who said, I tried it my way and I tried the chicken and the whatever and it didn't, it wasn't there. And then I did it the other way and boom, my body just reacted. Like there is a reason that it's put together this way. It, it comes together, it's together beautifully. So how, how would you guys, you know, um, um, Heather, you touched on it. Like you didn't feel restricted in any way whatsoever. Now on other diets and stuff, did you guys, have you guys felt that way? Did you feel like it was more of a restriction when you tried other things versus the ER shred? I'll, I'll jump in on that. Um, Go ahead. I've never, I've never been on a, a diet per se. Um, but I have done the more traditional way that our company, uh, suggests to do it. Okay. And honestly, that, that, that was tough, uh, for me, it's not tough for a lot of people. And I love how ER shred is an option, you know, that, that we've added to that. But, um, you know, when, when you start counting calories and you start, you know, this much vegetables and this much, you know, simple carbohydrates and this much, you know, proteins and stuff like that. It's just that, that's not for me. And, I, and I'm guessing it's not for a lot of people because the, 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 it's the restriction feeling. Right. Mm -hmm. And I love how this protocol, this 11 day protocol, seven meals over 11 days, eat until you're satisfied, not overeat, but eat until you're satisfied and eat like a queen or a king. Right. Delicious stuff. Uh it's just been it's just been fantastic. It's it, it's like the perfect storm of the science backed products that we use and the protocol that Sean and Crystal have pretty much founded. And it, it's just been it's been a game changer for me. And do I do it every 11 days? No, absolutely not. Do I am I human? Will I? Ha have have the addiction started to creep back in yes absolutely yes mm -hmm. <laughs> it's impossible mm -hmm. not to mm -hmm. for me it's probably possible for some others but not for me and guess what i've got it in my quiver er shred it's coming out all i need is 11 days a lot of times all i need is four mm -hmm. but i mean monday tuesday wednesday thursday boom i'm right back to where i need to be uh, it's just been fantastic. How about you guys? Yeah. 
One thing I would say about like the other diets I've tried is that they were very restrictive and hard, you know, like the broccoli yeah. chicken thing you're talking about. So I would try to be perfect. And then what would happen? I would end up binging, you know, mm -hmm. I would go over and then I would throw my hands in the air and give up and then start on Monday. <laughs> and so with this, the thing I've noticed that is why I'm so like, crazy about it is that I feel so good. And so when I do want to have, I do still have all my fun foods, but when I do, I don't want to have that much and mm. I, that's how I feel. And I'm becoming more and more not wanting that stuff, but I still allow it, but it's like, yeah, I just am more in tune with my body and I'm saying I can have anything. There's no rules. I make my own rules. <laughs> like, so yeah, I just feel good and I don't, I want, I'm more self-motivated to just keep that feeling. Yeah. Right. You're conscious, you're conscious of the, the, the crap feeling that those foods yeah. brought that, that bring you. Right. And mm -hmm. that's what has been fantastic for me. Again, I, I will reiterate, I am a chip carb bread junkie. <laughs> and if it's in front of, before this, if it's in front of me, and guys, you know, if you have kids, I've got goldfish literally <laughs> fall. Like I could reach right over there right now and grab some goldfish, like a handful. <laughs> but we don't even have that, the, the, the single box. We've got the big container to where it's easy to just dig in and shove it in your mouth. <laughs> and this has been fantastic for me to, because I know that that causes inflammation, right? Yeah. I would rather be out of my chronic pain. And guys, I'm in chronic pain every day. I mean, I'm talking a lot of, on average, it's eight out of 10 every day before this. And now, and I'm not making Tell any medical why. claims. I'm not making it. What? Tell people why you're in chronic pain, just so they understand the amount of inflammation that you've had in your body. All right. So uh, <laughs> I've had, I'm 44. I had bilateral knee replacement. Uh, at 36. So eight years ago, I had both of my knees replaced after having both of my ACL and MCLs replaced. And I've had shoulder surgery. I had later labrum repair. I've had two lipomas taken out of my back and I've had major surgery on my L5 S1 micro discectomy and a laminectomy. And so I'm just one of those, one of those guys that, you know, shit happens to them. <laughs> and <laughs> And the more surgery you have, the more that they cut you, the more inflammation that's going to grow around that to, to try to heal it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't control it, at, at some point, it's going to keep on throwing that fire at that area. And that's when it's called chronic. And when mm -hmm. it's chronic, it, it never stops. And it's, it's debilitating. It really is yeah. debilitating. I mean, it'll affect your, your mood, your sleep, uh, everything. And that's why I've been searching for so long. That's why I went the vegetarian vegan. That's why I've done acupuncture and PT and chiropractor and CBD. And by the way, the CBD patches that we have game changer for me, game mm -hmm. changer for me. Um, you know, the joint support, I, I've done it all guys. I've done it all. This has been a way for me to control the, I guess, self-sabotage, really, mm -hmm. uh, by, by shoving in the painful <clears throat> stuff or shoving in the stuff that made me feel good for two seconds that causes literally five days of pain mm. or something like that. And, you, know what, uh, you know what's funny? I have a saying that I tell people that are trying to lose weight. I go, a moment on the lips is not worth a lifetime on the hips. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, so that, and, that and it's two, true. I mean, that two seconds of satisfaction is it really worth? There's there's another great saying: nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. Absolutely right. I mean, I'm sure you guys can can yeah, can, you know, agree with that. I mean, it's but but you got to get there first. You got to realize sure. you got to realize how bad you felt because a lot of us don't. A lot of us didn't even realize how bad we felt before we felt as good as we do now, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like it's like your eyes. 
I remember going to the eye doctor for the first time when I was like 40 years old and not thinking that I, I, my eyes were bad. And then they did the, is this one better? Is this one better? Is this one better? Is this one better? And then they gave me some glasses. I'm like, oh shit, my eyes are terrible. <laughs> I wish, <laughs> I wish I'd have done this so much, you know, earlier, but it was the gradual, the, the, the gradual decl declination, I guess, of my eyesight where I didn't mm. notice kind of like the frog in the hot water. Yeah, right? we, we don't know until yeah. it's boiling and then we die. But uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, this has been fantastic. That's awesome. Guys, there's so much like I'm, my, my science brains like like I'm like fighting myself. You guys know me like I'm like I'm like jabbing myself inside because I but I don't want to I don't even want to go there in this call. Like I really just want to keep you guys are doing such an amazing job because I think there's just so many people that have been where you guys have been. You know, and and I've been there. Like I was there a long time ago. I was there many years ago, and I was just sick and tired. Like I kind of did it for you know. I was this little fat kid growing up, and I just I got tired of getting made fun of. So I was like, hell, I'm gonna be that that muscle guy in the damn magazine. Nobody's gonna with me anymore. You know what I mean? Um, and that's kind of like how it started. But then it's turned into this whole amazing. Like I just get jacked up helping other people feel awesome. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's just an awesome thing. So, but I think you guys are doing great because you're really kind of sharing, um, you know, the concepts of this. And, and we talk, you know, again, when we say you can eat like a king or a queen, like, you know, we're not going to go and pound back potato chips. Like the goal is to get rid of the crap is to get rid of the stuff. That's not food. Um, you know, Heather, you were saying that you don't miss this. And I call that sometimes foods. I call that processed chemical food. Like if it's made in a laboratory with fake products and genetic engineering, it's actually not food. It kind of pisses me off that we classify it as food here in America. It's not food. It's just not food. You know what I mean? Food to me is nutrients, vitamins, and minerals because that's what our body is designed to thrive and function off of. But like you guys said, look, like everybody thinks like for years, people are like, dude, like, oh my God, you don't eat anything. I'm like, are you kidding? Like, I'll drink a beer. You want to have one right now? You want to eat an ice cream cone? You want to have a big chocolate chip cookie? You want to put ice cream between the chocolate chip cookie? Let's have an ice cream cookie sandwich for crying out loud. Like, <laughs> When you get when you get control of your health, are you guys finding that too? Like now that you've done this for for so much longer, when you decide to just be normal, I don't even like to call it cheat. I think that when we call it a cheat or we call it a treat, we're referring to ourselves as our dog. Like we're not dogs. Like we're not giving ourselves treats. Like do you find that it's now your body's reacting differently? So if you do, if you say Heather, if you say, hey, you know what, damn it. I'm going to have some chocolate chip ice cream because I want some chocolate chip ice cream. Is there any guilt behind that now? Do you feel it's your body? Can you control the craving size? Um, and do you feel your body bounces back faster? So that's actually kind of what I was thinking about and wanted to kind of piggyback on what Adam was saying too, is that when we had all that information, and I've seen this in the comments, oh, I don't have reactions to food. I'm just here to lose weight. And so I get that because I was that way before. I didn't know I had issues with food until I eliminated and then reintroduced. Mm. So yeah, I have control and I can stop. I'm not going to sit down with a bag of chips and eat the whole thing. I may grab some pork rinds if I want the crunch, mm -hmm. but I don't need I don't need all of that. I treated myself, you know, after my my second shred before my third shred. I treated myself to a gin and tonic. I'm like, I've never really had issues with gin. Gin is one of the drinks that I prefer. One gin and tonic. Now I usually have three. I had one gin and tonic and I woke up the next morning like I was at a frat house the night before. That's crazy. I could not believe it. And I'm I'm thinking like back to the days when I used to drink Boone's Farm and I mm -hmm. have a doctor's in education. I can afford a higher quality gin. Uh uh. <laughs> I am all set with that now. Thank you. I have learned my lesson that my body no longer likes gin. So I will now move on. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I know, Aubrey, you, you what what about you? I know you've had some tequila. <laughs> well, okay, I definitely need less. I will say that, but I my body likes tequila. So Okay, good. Good. And that's okay. Oh, yeah. That's good. okay. Uh I have to tell you a funny story because I was kind of feeling, this has been like a psychological mind F for me, kind of. 
And so because we live in a world where people eat, it's social, you know, and the holidays. And so I was like, well, you know what? Like this weekend, I'm going to let myself have some treats. Like I'm going to get this ice cream and I'm going to have these uh, chocolate covered pretzels that I like. And da, 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 da. so I like had this in my freezer and in my pantry, I like got the treats and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have these. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't want it. I was mm. like, I'm just going to make crystals cookies for ER shred cookies. Like nice. because I had a few treats and I just feel awful. I'm like, yeah. It not worth it, right? Food. It's not worth it. You can taste it too. It's like I taste the wax or something. It doesn't even. I gotta. I dr have drank one soda since I've done this. I was a diet soda addict. I didn't even bring that up. And they have like the soda trucks here with all the flavors, you know. And so there was a soda truck, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna get one. And I hadn't had a soda. I was really proud of myself. Anyway, it tasted like cherry cough syrup. To yeah. Me. I was mm -hmm. like. Ugh. So it's kind of, it's just been like, it hasn't been hard for me to give up stuff because it doesn't taste good anymore. I'm like, miracle, you know, it's not like, yeah. I, yeah, so, but some things like tequila, you know, there's a few things I'm like, that still works. Mm, damn right. Look, even, damn right. Even what, let me piggyback on that. One thing Sean said early on when I first started uh, listening to his lives or maybe he posted somewhere, you know, food is not meant to be treated as entertainment. Yeah. Right. And to touch on what Aubrey just said, it, it is just part of our social dynamic to where we use food and drink literally in every situation. Mm -hmm. We celebrate with food and drink. We uh, sympathize or grieve with food and drink. Everything in between we, is food and drink. And mm. it's not meant to be entertainment. And I, I, I've really figured out with this the the whole pleasure pain thing right the the pleasure of the taste is not worth the pain that it will inflict later and Ooh. that's been a, a a game changer for me um and i think that's where aubrey is and heather is and i'm sure jesse was at, at one time when he because now he's in such a routine but you know for for us, we're, we're realizing, okay, this is going to do this and it's not going to really serve us or, or me. So let me at least, at least for two seconds, rethink it. Whereas mm -hmm. before it was automatic, it was reflexive. It was going down the hatch, but now, mm -hmm. now we're thinking about it. And I think that's how you change habits. I mean, it's not going to be, all of a sudden for everyone, for every, for every addiction, if you want to call it an addiction, uh, for every food or treat, but it will over time, maybe two seconds goes to five seconds. And then the next time you're like, you know what? I'm good. So, yeah. Is that your amazing, is that your amazing wife walking around behind you? She is. There? Yeah. <laughs> She is. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make her say hi next time she walks by. Um, <laughs> she yeah, can't no, hear you. Dude, I got my headphones. Um, guys, that that is, um, you know, from a health coaching perspective, that is like seriously finding the freaking pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It, it really is. Like you just sum that up because it's like, it's the same reason why I don't carry cash in my wallet most. Of the time. You know what I mean? And I've learned yeah. this trick a long time ago because if I carry cash. I just like easily like I throw it out where if I have my card, I'm like, eh, do I really want to swipe it for $2? And it kind of gets me in the habit of like stopping by. And that's, just, that's kind of the same thing with food, right? Like once you feel, once you experience how good your body is supposed to feel on a daily basis when it's healthy from the inside out, you just don't see the need. Like it's not like you're – losing out right Aubrey I think we talked about this like when you go out with your friends and your friends are shoving you know drink after drink and fried food after fried food and they're like oh come on like you know oh the person on the diet I just learned to be like 
You know, like, I mean, that's just <laughs> yeah. how it is. Like, that's just how it is. Like, listen, I'm sorry that you're going to wake up tomorrow morning and feel like shit. And I'm going to crack a workout before six o'clock. I'm going to jack my endorphins. I'm going to have an amazing day. I'm going to get A, B, C, D, E, F, and G all done. And you're not even probably going to be out of bed yet. Like, for me, that's living life. And again, if you choose that you want to whatever, this isn't about not enjoying, right? We're just saying like it gives you the power. It's such an empowering feeling to know that you're in control and you don't you don't have to those though when you have a when you go in a bad mood or or something pisses you off. How many of us have that happen every day cuz everybody's human, right? You know, you don't go, "Oh, I'm going to go pound that ring ding." You know, like it just you don't turn to the ring ding anymore. Like you're like, "I'm going to go eat a slab of meat," you know, <laughs> because it's going to fuel me. It's going to make me feel nutritious, you know what I mean? Like it's just, it's crazy. And again, like I can't stress enough. Like I've been doing this for, you know, 20 year mission and it's still like I'll I'll still do things like I'll eat a burger and fries knowing damn well that for the next 25, 30 minutes, Crystal yells at me all the time. She's like, I, you're, you better not complain. You better not complain if you eat that freaking hamburger. And I'm like, ah, but it's going to taste so good. Right. And, you know, you can still do that every now and then. You know, I, I do it to remind myself. I'm like, eh, I don't want to feel like that. But it's, it's, it really is empowering to do that. So let's wrap this up. What do you guys feel? What, you know, you guys have shared so much more than really just what the ER shred is, right? We're talking about mindset shifts. We're talking about controlling cravings. We're talking about, I know you guys have all shared with me, your sleep is better. You're waking up with more energy, mental focus, clarity is on point. Isn't that such a cool feeling? Like when you just wake up in the morning and you're just like, shit, like you're like, boom, you're like in such a deep sleep at night that your body like wakes up and you're like, wow, I'm ready to go. What do you think has been the biggest aha for you? What can you share with people? And if anybody's watching that's not doing this, why do they need to get on our January 4th largest ER shred group shred ever after the New Year's? What can you guys, Heather, go with you. What can you say for that? You're worth 11 days. If you're yeah. coming alive on day five, which so many people have, and you get that control of yourself, it's 2020 has been challenging for all of us. It has been stressful. It has been constantly shifting, constantly unpredictable. But if you can, if you can commit to 11 days for yourself, it's worth it when you have control to take things as they fly at you when you understand what you're doing and you just feel better, then you get a side effect of losing weight in inches. Why not take a shot? 11 days. I love it. Hey, real quick, last question. Sean wants to know, how do you feel as far as your emotions and your joy? Do you feel that, that you're able to control those at all better? Do you notice anything in that area? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm in, I'm in a 203 K process and that's one of the more stressful mortgage situations I've ever seen. Um, and I'm coping through that with remote teaching and then my six year old's teaching with me and I can process all of that. I don't hang on to things. I don't dwell on things. Mm. I am able to let it go. Let me just Love go. It. Yes, I Love went it. there. <laughs> and were you, were you having trouble with that before? You understood that every bite of food you took can actually send those chemical signals through your body and dictate that stuff? I think so. I don't think I wasn't in control of anything. I didn't okay. feel in control of anything. Mm. And once I got control of my food, I got control of my body, I got control back of my mind. I still right. don't have control of my job. I still don't have control over 2020 because those changes are still going to keep happening. Are we hybrid? Are we remote? What are we doing? Those things are out of my control. But what I can control has helped me be able to embrace what I can. Love and it. I am a Taurus. I am a type A. I don't do well when I can't control. And so I have been able to embrace that. My middle school children might, might tell you differently because it is progress report time. So they're feeling that. But I was not feeling that. Yeah. I feel that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'll uh, I'll send a little prayer for those kids. Um, Aubrey, 
what um how about you what have you noticed anything emotion wise um in 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 attitude feeling and biggest aha that you've kind of learned from this of where you're at now and why you would encourage somebody to just give it a shot yeah i mean i definitely feel like i've gotten a lot of um joy <laughs> from just getting my self confidence back and mm. like the belief in myself and like I can do hard things. I can like find my own answers. And um, I feel like I've been a lot more present with my kids and I've been less distracted. Mm. Not planning a meal plan and I'm not cooking my perfect macros and packaging them in my little containers. And like, I'm blending my shake. Okay, I'll be there. You know, it's just, I just, am, my mind isn't so cluttered. Um, mm. And I have had more mental clarity too. I feel I'm like, getting tasks done more streamlined like i'm just more organized it's just kind of like given me just a mental emotional physical yeah. in every way um but if <clears throat> far as like i think the biggest thing for me that it's done is just it's like the recipe for behavior change and not just with food just with a lot of things i just mm. realizing the power yeah just like that i am i have the power to do things that i say i'm gonna do and um, there's something about it. That's why I want to share it with other people, especially people who have struggled with getting to their goals. Mm -hmm. Because behave, it's the behavior change. If you can't get the behavior change, then you're never going to get there. And so I just feel like that's what it, it's. That's become the answer. I'm like, this is yeah, great. yeah. It makes me so proud that you guys are at this point in life. Three shreds later. <laughs> great because i remember the i remember the beginning and that wouldn't have been your answer that's so awesome all right buddy what about i know you you've talked a lot but real quick you 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 wrap up with um do you notice emotion change i mean with all the stuff going on joy anything to that nature and what's the biggest thing that you would say to somebody um you know who's out there who might be fence sitting where they're at sure um have I noticed an emotion change? Well, I think I've noticed my emotions not getting to a level that uh, they sh they would have been um, at, in this season of my life prior to this. Because, I mean, guys, I mean, 2020 has hit us all like a, like a freight train, right? And I remember somebody said this recently to me, and, it's, and it hit home that you know the cliche is hey we're all in the same boat and i disagree uh i think a more appropriate saying is we're all in the same storm but we're not all in the same boat we've all got different boats to to deal with the storm and this the ease of this has been great for my uh mood and the result of this has been great for my mood too. Me being able to share this with my team has been great for my mood because, I mean, I just added uh, a whole bunch of people today to it. And I know that they're starting with us on January 4th. And I know that they're going to feel fantastic too. Um, so if you are on the fence, just like what Heather and Aubrey have already shared, I would say 11 days, guys, 11 days. You kind of owe it to yourself to, to give you 11 days the, uh, the first, in the first 15 of 2021. Why not? I mean, it's, there's 20,000 people that, ha that, that, that can verify this. And it's backed by science and it's backed by clinical studies and it's backed by, I mean, intermittent fasting. You, it's like the most... Uh, the, the highest Googled term when it comes to diet uh, in 2020 or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what we incorporate, intermittent nutritional fasting. And guys, you, you are all part, I think, of uh, the life app that, that now that has all the science behind it. You know, the mm -hmm. ketosis, the heavy ketosis, the autophagy and all that. It's just fantastic. Your body needs it. And I've kind of, uh, with my team, coined the phrase, if you... If you want to fix the road, you got to stop the traffic. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do, you know, four days out of those 11. So if you're on the fence, just give it a shot. You know, I, I, I swear that you will feel alive by day five.
and then you'll just keep on going because just like we've shared, you don't want to stop. It's just been fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that's been one of the things that's blown my mind from even from like health coaching is that, you know, I used to have to pull teeth to get people to keep going. And now it's like, people are like hounding, messaging, jumping. Like I want more, I want more. And I'm like, damn, this is just, this isn't drugs. This is just, this is the ER shred, <laughs> but it is, but it is drugs because food, as you guys now know, food is the most powerful legal drug on the face of the human planet. And literally every bite of food that you choose, you choose to put in your mouth instantly talks to your body and sends signals. And the human body is miraculous. And we've heard a lot of things that have happened. Um, again, everybody has different results. These are these guys' stories. We do not claim to treat, cure, prevent disease or anything to that nature. But I've studied the human body enough to know that given a fighting chance, the human body will heal itself. And that fighting chance is, in my opinion, the freaking ER shred because it, it hits every aspect. It's not just one thing. It hits everything that we need, the elimination, the reset, the shred with the fuel and, and combining together this amazing community. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. So guys, I want to wrap it up because I want to respect everybody's time. We're a little bit over here. Um, I want to encourage anybody who has not try this yet or is on the fence stop 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 like you don't decide you like you're not on the fence to buy a thousand dollar cell phone and you know what i mean and, and get the newest one coming up you're not on the fence to buy the louis vuitton bag like you just buy it you're not on the fence to get all this other shit the most important thing that you could possibly do is invest in yourself and, and invest in your health because i don't care how much money you have you cannot buy ultimate health um, when it gets to a certain point. I've watched that happen with my own two eyes. So get off the fence, you know, get involved. Our next, our next shred is January 4th. Um, down across the bottom, we have a free Facebook support group that Adam just mentioned. It has 20,000 people in it. It's growing um, literally rapidly. It's worldwide now. You just go to www.ershredders.com. It will instantly take you into our group. You do not have to use the foods that we're doing. Like This is a free support group. Come in, see what we're about, see the community, see the upliftingness. That's my own word I just made up. Um, see um, you know, the, the communities, see how we just, everybody's there for each other. Like, I can't describe it. Like you have to experience it yourself, but you will feel jacked up. You will wish that you found this years ago. I promise you, because that's what it's doing for people. So jump on that, see what's going on, go to ershred.com, join us. And if you want to learn more about the actual breakdown of the system that we use, the four-part system. We have a call tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's our Come Alive calls, the last one of the year. We have somebody on there that was on that show, Extreme Weight Loss, that is now an ER shredder. Um, this guy is a rock star. We have other amazing testimonials of people that have just come alive. And then I'll do a quick little 15-minute breakdown of what the ER shred is. So I, I invite you onto that call tomorrow at 8 o'clock, and that's in our page. Come to our page and boom, you just get right in there. So guys, thank you so much. I appreciate all of your time. Um, I love, I seriously can't thank you. Like you guys make me so happy. I'm um, watching your guys' success and seeing you guys doing your jam. And it, it just, it, it, it brings so much excitement to me. So I'm happy for all of you guys. I'm excited for all of you. And I really can't wait to continue to nurture our friendship and, and see how many other lives we can all impact together as one team on a mission to just dominate and fix world health. So I hope you guys all have an amazing rest of the week. And, and thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Thank all right, you. guys. Take care. Have all right, guys. Night. Have a great night. See you. They don't know the trick that we just go back into this room after we don't go live. <laughs> um, I just found the videos from when we were in Vegas. When you're in Vegas? When I was, I met you in Vegas. That's you met me in Vegas. I met you in Vegas. Was that the one that I was up on stage for the for Team Isogenics when they did that Team Isogenics one, or is that the year after? Um, what year was it? It was the year that um, Adam Levine was there. With the whiteout party? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was this. That was the second one. So that was two thousand sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, because I just found the video where my friend Jen molested you. I found those videos today. Grabbing everybody's pecs.
Okay, I was like, she's coming to the shred. I'm getting, she's in the process of moving. She's shredding with us. And once she comes in, forget it. Dude, that's so funny. You just be like, hey, remember this guy? <laughs> oh, she remembers. And I also have the picture where she pretended to grab Tony Escobar's ass in our team photo. That is so funny. And Sean and Tony both knew about it. That is so funny. Gotta 